In this video, we're going to look at some theory questions that the tester might ask you at the start of your driving test. And these theory questions might come up in your theory test as well, if you're doing them. I'd like to start by thanking you for any donations you've been giving me via PayPal. I've been getting a number of donations um, over the past number of weeks, and I really, really appreciate it. It's a great source of support for me, and it allows me to keep making regular videos. Links will be in the description if you wish to make a donation to my YouTube channel. So let's look at some questions here now. The first one, where are you not allowed to park? So there's quite a number of places you're not allowed to park as a driver. Um, for example, you're not allowed to park in a yellow box in a clear way. You're not allowed to park um, before or on a pedestrian crossing or a pelican crossing or zebra crossing. Usually you're not allowed to park 15 meters before any kind of zebra crossing. You are not allowed to park opposite an entrance or park in a way that would block other people's view, like blocking a roadway or entrance or something like that. You're also not allowed to park um, opposite um, or beside a continuous white line because that could force other drivers to overtake you dangerously. And of course, you're not allowed to park on a bend um, or on the brow of a hill um, or anywhere where you would be putting others in danger or in jeopardy. So the next question then, if you're at a crossroads and you're turning right and coming out from a minor road onto a main road, so you're at a crossroads turning right from a minor road onto a major road, who has the right of way if there's a car across the road from you going straight? So in order to take a closer look at this, it's probably best that we have a look at a diagram here in the book. So here's the crossroads we were talking about. So the question was, let's say you being the yellow car, uh, you want to turn right like that. Um, and you're, you're waiting here at the line. But before you want to turn right, you notice that there's a red car and this red car wants to go straight. Okay. So the question is, who goes first in that situation? So let's bring it back there now. Okay, so the answer is neither, because you have to first and foremost be aware of this blue car here. This blue car is on the main road. So if you're dealing with a situation like that in real life or answering a question about it, do not forget to mention first and foremost that any traffic on the main road going this way, the main road, they have to go first, okay? You can see here you have the, I'll just move this over a bit here. There's a triangle here, which means yield. So that means that the yellow car must yield, not just to the right, but to everybody on the main road, okay? So let's let's just presume then that, uh, we'll just bring him up there. So let's just presume that the main road is nice and clear. And you are the yellow car wanting to turn right, and the red car is wanting to go straight. So the red car should go first, okay? The red car going straight, should go first because he's doing less work. I mean, the red car is ending up on another minor road and he's not turning the wheel. The The yellow car doing this is ending up on a main road and is turning the steering wheel. So that would be two extra layers of work that the yellow car is doing in comparison to the red car. So the yellow car has more work to do than the red car. So if the yellow car is going right and the red car is going straight, the red car should be allowed to go first. However, if the yellow car has already crept out and is already in the middle of his turn, and by that stage, the red car is only like he's, you know, a couple of car lengths from the line. Well, in that case, the yellow car should be allowed to finish out his turn because the yellow car has already started his turn and you can't really expect the yellow car to stop here in the middle of the road to let him go, okay? So the answer is the red car goes first but just be aware of the main road first and foremost. And the yellow car should give way to the red car unless the yellow car has already started his turn. Our next question, when would you use your hazard warning lights? The hazard warning lights are generally only used in an emergency. So for example, let's say you're involved in an accident or a car crash, you should put on your hazard lights then to warn other road users that there is a hazard or some form of obstruction up ahead. You would also use the hazard warning lights if you're stopped 
at the scene of an accident for whatever reason. You could also use the hazard lights if instructed to do so by somebody in authority, like the guardie, for example, or police. And you would use your hazard lights also to warn other drivers behind you that there could be a sudden slowdown or a sudden stop, potentially, up ahead. So, for example, you could be driving and you might notice that there's an ambulance um, or some kind of obstruction up ahead, like an ambulance, I mean, um, at the scene of an accident. So you could then slow down gradually, and that means your brake lights will come on. But if you flash your hazard lights as well, it gives extra warning to the car behind you that there may be some kind of uh, problem up ahead. And then if they do the same, everybody slows down nice and gradually then, without any complications, hopefully anyway. You would also use your hazard lights if your car is getting towed away. So if it's broken down and a tow truck is towing it away, the hazard lights of the car should be on then. Okay, so our next question then, um, what causes your car to lose grip on the road? Now, there's quite a number of answers to this. The more obvious ones probably would be bald or badly worn tires can cause your car to lose grip on the road. The tires are the only part of your car that touches the ground, so they must be kept properly maintained. They should have a good depth, um, so there should be like at least three or four uh, millimeters in depth. The minimum tire tread depth is 1.6, but you should never let it get that low. So having a good depth on the tires, having them properly maintained with, um, with them being inflated, not being overinflated, but not being underinflated either, um, so that would be one thing. Uh, badly maintained tires can cause the car to lose grip on the road. Also bad weather. So for example, wet weather, um, but more probably, more likely to cause um, a car to lose grip would be ice on the ground. Um, so on a frosty morning or something like that. Uh, ice, black ice. So, so badly worn tires and bad weather can cause you to lose grip on the road. Another way you could lose grip on the road is if you're driving over road markings. So, you know the way you'll see um, road markings on the road from time to time, like, like a yellow box or, or white lines, white arrows, white parking spaces like this. If the car is driving over a lot of these markings, especially if the markings are kind of new and thick, it can cause um, issues with uh, road grip. Another um, way drivers can lose grip on the road is uh, due to the existence of wet leaves. So especially if there's a large cluster of wet leaves on the ground, that can cause um, a car to lose grip on the road. So be aware if you see that, especially in the autumn time. And also at or around uh, level crossings, you might notice that sometimes there's this kind of rubbery, um, I, I don't know what the correct term to describe it is, but there's this kind of material that helps the road um, intersect in a level way at the level crossings and it can be kind of um, slippy sometimes for, for a period of time. So that little bit of uh, rubbery uh, material that elevates slightly to give the road a level feel, that can cause the car to lose grip because it doesn't have as much traction as your regular tarmac would have. So that's nearly it. Don't forget to let me know in the comment section some of the questions that the tester might have asked you in your driving test, if you've already done one that is. Remember, you can uh, make a donation on PayPal. Links will be in the description. And thanks again for any help and support. I'll be back very soon anyway with another driving lesson video. Bye for now.